this, this just grabs me, so I just have to share it because, so I'm thinking on, I, I've said, I think it was at the board meeting we talked a little bit about, you know, I'd been here 19 months and it seemed like a blink of an eye and it seems like forever all in the same breath. So I know you guys you know, these are the forever ones and I'm the blink. But, um, but the thing is, is that everything old becomes new again, right? And when, I, when we sang this, um, here in this place the new light is shining. Now is the kingdom, now is the day. Now is the kingdom, now is the day. We're talking about living lives of purpose today and, and how that drives us. What, what is our purpose? What is the thing that calls us through our day and to our next thing and to a goal? How do we, how do we decide those things? How do we know that um, it is indeed what God calls us to. I mean, we've got the common answer, right? Well, we pray about it. Well, you know, I am so guilty of praying a whole lot. Ask my husband, who got left at home today, by the way, because I have both sets of keys for the truck in my purse. Um, but anyway, so he, but he will tell you, I talk a lot. And you guys all know that. But how often do we stop and listen? So I try to intentionally stop in my day and listen. Listen to my husband, to the folks around me, to, to God. That is having some purpose. Now, I'm not going to say it's living a purposeful life, but that gleaning of where am I, where am I, where are the people around me has to come through listening. The gleaning, to be able to glean where God calls us to go and to be takes listening. I, um, I'm, here we go. And so we just talked about new light. Verse 8 of our Isaiah, Isaiah reading. Then your light shall break free like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Wouldn't we just, oh, what if our purpose was to bring healing not just to a body of faith, to a community, to a circuit to Riverside Church Association, to Iowa, Nebraska. What if our purpose was to start here with a healing light of Jesus reflected through us? That's a purpose. That is a purpose. Now, I can't tell you the exact steps to get us there yet because I'm not the only one that listens to God, right? Everyone here, anybody watching us online, those who can't be either place right now, everybody has the ability to stop in their day and listen for that voice, to hear that leading. And then our next goal, right, is to share that. When I teach a basic course, which is coming up in two weeks, and I think I, I talked about it when we um, talked about this in, um, in our Together We Care, when I'm talking about lay ministry and, and building up leaders in the church, and what is the scariest word for a church? S-E-N-D. Sin. Right? We grow disciples. We mature disciples. And then God wants us to send them to somebody else. That God, that God, that God who calls us to heal the world as a reflection of him through his power calls us to send people out into the world. That's hard stuff. But that is a purpose. 
I know you all know some community of faith somewhere, or you've read about them, whose sole purpose is to create missionaries. To, and that's not just overseas, that's missionaries in your own town. Maybe they're doing a soup kitchen, maybe they have a, a store for necessary items that are very reasonably priced. Maybe they're working with homeless folks. Whatever they're doing, their mission, their purpose is to train people up to do those things. So they spend a lot of time and a lot of energy and a lot of money, let's be honest, in growing these folks up. And then, sometimes they even, it's kind of like the mama bird pushed them out of the nest, right? They're like, okay, God's calling you somewhere. Where is it? And they sit and pray with that person. What if that was one of our purpose? If you offer food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like midday. What did our reading from Matthew say? It says, you are the salt of the earth, right? But what happens when we lose our saltiness? What happens when we lose our purpose? What happens when we aren't focused on God and instead are focused on the things around us? It's that we lose our direction, right? And that's not just as a community of faith. That's as individuals. That's as families. That's as folks who live and work in a community. In so many different ways, we are called to live lives of purpose. Now, I'm also here to tell you. Now, remember, it also says in here that that Jesus did not come to wipe out everything the prophets said, right? So to wipe out the Old Testament. Instead, he came to uh, bring it into life. He came to bring it into that day. And he comes to bring it into our day today, right? Our day of, of 2022, 23, 25, 2030, Jesus is calling us with a purpose. Now, I hate to be the one to inform you this, but just because we live life's a purpose, now you might know a publication or two that, you know, if you follow everything that Jesus says, you too can have three Cadillacs in your garage. Doesn't work that way. Does not work that way. In fact, a lot of times when you follow Jesus, you might be walking. You might be bicycling. Hopefully it's a good bicycle. You might have to, what did we do last year with Danita's children, right? We helped someone get a little scooter so they could actually get around because they were listening to God, and we were able to help them continue to carry out that love of a purposeful life. Now, I can't stand here and tell you each what your purpose is, I can't even really stand here and tell you what the purpose of this family of faith is, this this community that comes together under the name of Jesus, except little tidbits at a time. I can't tell you what the church will look like in 50 years, because I don't know, only God knows. But maybe you've seen a vision. Maybe you see a vision of how we're church, not necessarily just on Sunday morning, but on Wednesday nights. Saturday night, on Saturday morning, on Tuesdays, Thursdays, Mondays, Fridays. I think I got them all. We are the church. We are the United Methodist Church here in this place in Oakland. And God calls us to be church, not just right here, right now, but in the days and weeks and years to come. But what we need is all of our ears, all of our ears and hearts listening to the words that come from God and saying, hey, what if, would you like to try? Come with me on this journey because I've got some stuff. Because what what does it say on the front of your bulletin? What are we going to do? We're going to offer. We're going to kindle. Oh, just offer. What's the second one? O-A- 
offer, accompany, kindle, right? So if we're doing that, we are living purposeful lives because we are living a life that Christ calls us to. So let's do that together. And when you hear that voice of God, even if you think it is so off the wall, you couldn't possibly be thinking right. It's most likely when it is God. So let's, let's live purposely, not as indivi- just as individuals, but as this community of faith in this place, in this time. And one of the ways that Christ shares, that we share Christ's story, that we share the love that we have is by this table. This table that we prepare whenever. I mean, we do it once a month. You could do this every day. You could do it a couple times a day. You could, you could do it now, and you could come with me and go up to Primrose, and you could, you could have, have communion again. Because God's table is open to us at all times, in all places, whenever we feel like we need to be fed in that way. This gift is purposeful. This gift is a way to feed us with purpose, to bring us back into the place where we focus a little deeper on the voice of God. So won't you join me at the table today and consider how God is calling you to be the salt and the light of Oakland.